What's on, ladies and gentlemen? My name's Ross. I like games. And today, I want to show you another red Digimon deck. Now, I've shown you a red Digimon deck. I've shown you a lovely aggro red Digimon deck. This is, this is very different. This is a very different kind of Digimon deck. And I like red as a color. I like to play aggressive decks generally. That's kind of my style. I'm not an aggressive person by nature, but I'm a very aggressive card game player. By which I mean I play aggressive decks. I, I'm not aggressive towards other people when I play. That, ladies and gentlemen, would be rude. The point is, I like this deck. So let's have a gander, shall we? Now, this is a bit trickier than some of the other red decks we've looked at. And I, I think I might like it a little bit more. Don't, 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 don't tell anyone. Now, starting off with the Tamers, we actually start off, and we don't usually see this in red decks at the moment, with four copies of Coromon. If this Digimon has four or more evolution sources, you get an extra 1,000 power. We often see this as a one-off. We don't usually see this as a four-off. So that's already a little bit different. Now, there is actually a single copy of the Digitama from New Evolution in here as well. That is Yokomon. When you're attacking a Digimon, you get an extra 1,000 power. But the fact that we're playing a full playset here of Coromon should really point out to you nice and early. This is a deck that is going for evolving. This isn't one of those swarm decks or the traditional kind of aggro decks. Although there's plenty of aggro stuff in here, it is red. What we're trying to do here is we're trying to evolve up and we're getting the aggro rolling. But we're doing it with evolution and using those skills rather than anything else. Now in terms of level 3s, we do see three different Agamon and that makes me happy. We've got a full four copies of the one from the starter set. And again, that shouldn't surprise you. This is just the one that gives you an extra 1,000 power. The goal here is to try and build up your evolutions. Obviously, giving an extra 1,000 power after you've evolved is good. We do have the one from New Evolution that when you play it, you look at the top five cards of your deck, put a tamer into your hand, and the rest of the cards on the bottom of your deck. And essentially here, the goal very simply is get your tamers out. Your tamers are going to help you. And this is just another way of getting those tamers out a bit more easily. We'll look at the tamers in a minute. We've then got three copies of the promo that came around in the first ever product. That little six card booster pack. It is a five cost to play normally, which is very expensive. But when you play it, you get to destroy a Digimon with 3,000 or less power. Yes, you really only want to pay three to play a three cost down. But you know what? This is taking out a Digimon on its way in. A lot of the time, that is actually going to be worth it. And the other level 3 here we play is just one copy of Dracomon. Wh why are we playing a copy of Dracomon here? Also, this is a very heavy starter de deck. There is a lot of the starter deck in this deck. A bunch of changes, but there's a lot of the starter deck thrown in here. It is a 4,000 power, simple as that. That's what you get. You get a 4,000 power level 3. It is beefier than your other level 3s without being more expensive, though it is a vanilla card. Now, moving into level 4s, we have a few options. One of the ones we've got is the Greymon from the starter set. This is the one that's got an inheritable skill that gives you security attack plus 1. So, in theory, you got your Agamon giving you an extra 1,000 power, your Greymon giving you security attack plus 1, and again, we're not trying to swarm cheaper Digimon here and overwhelm our opponent, but we are trying to build up extra power and extra security attacks. Now, we do have a couple copies of Tyrannomon here, and Tyrannomon's here because it's a jammer. If you attack the stack and a security Digimon comes out, it will not KO Tyrannomon, regardless of how much power it has. Tyrannomon will survive. That is a good thing. It means you can get a cheeky early security attack without being worried about your Digimon going down. And then we've got Cordramon. And I owe you guys an apology. I was hit up by some lovely person on Twitter who told me I have been mispronouncing this the entire time. I apologize. And this is your generic blocker. 
It is a level 4 blocker. Your opponent attacks. You rest it. The attack goes to the Digimon rather than wherever your opponent wanted it to go. You have to pay 2 memory to attack, so you're unlikely to do so. You're playing Cauldremon here purely as a blocker, and I think you need blockers. And all the deck lists we're seeing at the moment have blockers. I don't think that's a coincidence. Now, moving into level 5s, we've got a couple more really nice inheritable skills. We've got the Metal Greymon that came around in the starter set. And this is the one whereby if the Digimon is blocked, you gain free memory. Now, bearing in mind you're trying to raise your power and you're trying to give yourself extra security attacks, what you're basically doing is making yourself into a Digimon that needs to be blocked and then demanding an extra free memory when you are blocked. Harsh, but you know what? It's going to help you out here quite nicely. The other kind of main level 5 we're going for here is Garudamon. Now, it does have piercing, which is awesome. If you attack a resting Digimon and destroy it, you will also get a security check. None of this choosing one or the other for you. And it's got an inheritable skill whereby on your turn, if this Digimon is blocked, you draw one. So very much like the Metal Greymon in this regard. Metal Greymon gives you free memory. Garudamon lets you draw a card. Either way, both the level fives from which you should be evolving have skills that benefit you when your Digimon is blocked. That's going to hurt your opponent. The other one we play here is a Skull Greymon or two, in fact. But this is not a Digimon you're going to evolve into. This is a Digimon you're going to play normally. And when you play it normally, you destroy one of your opponent's Digimon with Blocker. I have talked in this video about the importance of having a Blocker. Skull Greymon comes in here and gets rid of your opponent's Blockers. That's a good thing. It is a 7 cost, which makes it very expensive. But a lot of the time, it's going to be worth it. And then we have just a cacophony of level 6s. We're actually playing four different level 6s. Now, we do have the generic Huamon here that came around in the starter set. Cheap to play as a 10 cost, cheap to evolve as a 2 cost, and 12,000 power. It doesn't have any skills, but bearing in mind we've got a lot of inheritable skills here. This is very much an evolution deck. So even though you're a vanilla level 6, you should still have some tricks rolling around. Now, speaking of tricks, we've got Break Dramon. I love me some Break Dramon. Break Dramon is an 11,000 power Digimon. Not particularly cheap, but 11,000 power is quite nice. But it's got piercing. Simple as that. So that means that when you attack a resting Digimon, you will also then get a security check. This is a very good thing. Now, we've already seen one of your Digimon with piercing. We've now got a second Digimon with piercing. And this shouldn't particularly surprise you. Piercing is a very powerful skill. Rather than having to choose between taking out a resting Digimon or performing a security check, you now get to do both. This is a very, very good thing. And it's on a beefy level 6, which is probably going to survive the security check to do it all again next turn. And then we get to War Greymon. And we've gone for a 2-2 two -two split here. Two of each of the War Greymon. The one from the starter deck. Seriously, I am loving how much this is built from the starter deck. Really makes it approachable for newer players. During your turn, for every two evolution sources you have, you get security attack plus one. Like I've said, this is a full-on evolution deck. In theory, you actually get security attack plus three, because you'll have four evolution sources, security attack plus two, and then you'll have Greymon, extra security attack, plus probably an extra 1,000 power from Agamon, and an extra 1,000 power from Coromon. And this is adding up super quickly. It really should not be outside the rounds of possibility for you to be like a 14,000 power Digimon with security attack plus 3. That is really hard to fight against. Now, the other War Greymon, when you evolve, you get security attack plus 1, but only for this turn. And if you attack and the security card is an option card, your opponent doesn't get the security skill. I don't like this one as much. 
but the fact you get the automatic security attack plus one when you evolve and the fact that you get to ignore option cards which can be brutal as we'll see in a minute okay i see it and then obviously we play a couple copies of omnimon here if you're playing a red or blue deck that has level sixes in you really probably should play Omnimon. Firstly, you got 15,000 power. That's huge. Secondly, when you evolve, you get to destroy all of your opponent's Digimon with one name. You pick a name, all the Digimon go down. And thirdly, when you attack, you get to just put a level 6 under it into your hand and make yourself active again. So you're a 15,000 power Digimon that gets to attack twice. It is... um. Yeah, there's, there's a reason everyone's playing it when they hit a level 6. Now, in terms of Tamers, we do have a 3-2 split here. Free of the one from the starter deck. It is a 2 cost that gives all of your Digimon an extra 1,000 power. Again, we are building up here. Having a Tamer that gives you an extra 1,000 power is good. And then 2 of the one from New Evolution. At the start of your turn, if your memory is 2 or less, you put it to 3. That's quite nice. And all of your red Digimon with four or more evolution sources get security attack plus one. Bearing in mind, as I've shown you, this is a deck that relies on inheritable skills and building up into a powerhouse. We're not going for the cheap evolution we've seen in some other decks. We are going for I am rolling and I am powerful and I am here. Took me a turn or two to get here, but now that I'm here, it's, it's going to be kind of hilarious. Now... The important thing to note here, of course, is that this can combine with Greymon. And this can combine with War Greymon, and you can legitimately get security attack plus four. Bearing in mind your opponent will only start the game with five security cards, that means you attack all five security cards. That, ladies and gentlemen, is ridiculous. Now, in terms of option cards, we're actually playing three of the four from the starter deck and none from New Evolution, which amuses me greatly. We've got ourselves a couple copies here of Shadow Wing. Just gives one of your Digimon an extra 3,000 power for one cost. It's nice. Plus, if it comes out as a security card next turn, all of your Digimon get security attack plus one. That's really cool. It's a nice little power boost in a deck that likes nice little power boosts. We've got a single copy here of Starlight Explosion. It is a two cost that gives all of your Digimon that are security cards an extra 7,000 power. It basically means on the turn you play it, your opponent will probably be destroyed if they go for a security attack. That's hilarious. And when it comes out as a security card... It does the same thing, basically, which is nice. It's a good thing. And then two copies of Gaia Force. Now, Gaia Force is the one we really want as a security card because it's free. If it doesn't come out as a security card, it costs eight memory. But you just destroy one of your opponent's Digimon. No ifs, no buts, no maybes, no appendices, no exceptions. You literally just get to pick any one of your opponent's Digimon and just destroy them outright. It's an extremely powerful card. And it, it's not a coincidence, right, that we keep seeing this coming around in red decks. It is not a coincidence that red decks or decks with red cards in tend to be playing a bit of Gaia Force. We love it as a security card, but even as not a security card. If your opponent's built up some big, powerful level 6 with 4 evolution sources and lots of inheritable skills, yeah, this will take it down in one go. That's a good thing. I like this deck. I like that it's very different to the other red decks. I like that it's really building up those evolutions and taking advantage of those skills you get from the evolutions. And frankly, I'm a fan, ladies and gentlemen. I'm a fan. But I'd like to know what you think. So let me know in the comment section, would you go nuts, be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wasi. That's where we talk Digimon and a whole bunch of other games. And please do consider checking out patreon.com slash ptcgradio, where you can support the channel, get some bonus podcasts, all kinds of good stuff. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would you? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching... Wassy plays.